What's going on today, Internet? Selfish here with Retrospect, and today we're going to take a look at this mini emulator handset and see what makes it so cool. Come along. I totally came across this device on accident. I was checking out and said I needed to spend $8 to save $20, and this was only $12. So I saved money by purchasing it. And what I've gathered on it while I researched it in shipping is that this is actually a clone of the Pow Kitty version of the LDK game, the FC88 game was a Pow Kitty device, but it doesn't say Pow Kitty on here anywhere. So I'm not sure. It is made in China, but I do really like this box specifically because it says, life is wonderful because of you. And I knew it. I knew somebody else out there knew that life was wonderful because of me. Let's take a look and see what we got here. Looks like on top we got our device. We've got uh, some packaging we'll get rid of. We've got a battery. So this is that normal um, LG battery, the BL5C, that's in pretty much every retro handset. Uh, we have a cable that we'll go talk about later. We have a power charging cable with what looks like data transfer, but it has that on there. And we have some directions. I wonder if this tells us what it is. See, LDK Pocket 8. Now this isn't the first device I've seen with the LDK Pocket 8 though, and or saying that it's the LDK Pocket 8. This was, if this is the LDK Pocket 8, then this was a Pow Key device at one point in time. So we'll put our cables back in here. We're gonna need our battery. Just a quick aside. If this was the original LDK, not only would there be bumpers on top, but there's also a memory card slot here. In the Pow Kitty version, the FC88 actually had a memory card slot, or a memory card slotted right here, which you couldn't actually access. It was completely locked down, even though you could get that memory card out. This one here has the board for the memory card, but no memory card. So we might have to take this apart at some point in time. Probably not today, because this is a first look video, but in the future, we can take a look at it and see what's going on there. All right, so here's the device. One thing that's unique about this, if this is set up like any of these others that I've seen, is that this should have first party games on it. A lot of times when it comes to Nintendo, people are scared of the Nintendo Ninjas and they won't actually put first party games from Nintendo. Some maybe, but they're not gonna put Mario on there. You'll see Sonic on a lot of stuff. Not really a first party Nintendo game, but you'll never see like a Mario game on there. You might have it on there under some other name. I'm trying to think of some other ones, some Donkey Kong, stuff like that. You're just not gonna see it on a device like this. But if this is like the 88 and one version that Power Kitty had, it definitely had all that stuff on there. All right, let's take a look at the outside of the device before we power it up. So we kind of looked behind the battery. We looked at the battery. This here is our speaker, kind of obvious. Uh, like I said, if this was the original LDK, this would actually have bumpers up here. They had bumpers so you could play up the N64. Also a little bit easier for Game Boy Advance, though it's not necessarily required. Along with the lack of those things, you do have your headphone hole and you do have a USB hole. If you go to the side over here, we have two, not one, but two menu buttons. And I think they do the same thing. I'm not sure why there's two of them, but I'm pretty sure they do the same thing. You go to the bottom here, you have a place for the lanyard. You go to this side over here, you have your power button, and then you have a volume switch. If you go to the front here, you have an IPS display. You also have a really decent D-pad. It's not bad at all. And the buttons feel pretty good. They're not too springy. They do get pretty close to flat, but they don't seem to get stuck underneath, so that's good. And your start and select buttons. So let's fire this bad boy up. All we gotta do is hit the power button, and it should just fire right in. Interesting. So if this was an actual LDK, there actually would be a boot screen that would give you options for multimedia. You could change settings. This doesn't have Wi-Fi according to the listing, and the original one did have Wi-Fi, so there's some things like that. Also, I've seen that Datafrog is making one of these now too, but where I got this for $12, the Datafrog one does have the original bumpers on it, but they're 150 bucks. So just something to keep in mind. And I will throw a link to Pow Kitty down in my thingamabob, just in case you want to go to their website and take a look at it. There'll be a link down there for you. All right, so we got Adventure Island. Yeah, so this is exactly what I thought. Here's Super Mario 3. So yes, yeah, exactly what I had thought. This does have the original games on here from Nintendo. That is pretty cool. Not something that you see a whole lot, but yeah, this is a really good game selection. Dr. Mario, I'm impressed. I bet you it starts over at A here pretty quick because now we're at one. Yep, sure does. So this is a really good ROM set up until that point. So the best stuff is in like the first 80 or 90 games. I bet you the first games are the ones off of the original FC88 and then the rest of these are just add-ons. That would make a world of sense. Oh, it goes right into the POW screen. I know this is a hack for Mario Brothers. Weird. Let's test one of these menu buttons out. Just see what happens. And we'll test the other one out next time. Oh, cool. It memorizes where I was on the list. Well, that's kind of nice. So there's not really any technically any duplicates, but they are kind of duplicates. Let's take a look at some Castlevania here. Now, I'm noticing that I don't really have any control over brightness. 
I'm gonna guess it's the combination, like a select up or something, but I have no idea. Or maybe, nope, crap. Yeah, see that brings you right back to that menu screen. So both of them are the same. Both menu keys do the same thing. That is really weird. All right, so that gives you a little idea of what this thing is all about. And it's really hard to tell because it's really bright to be able to see how good this screen is, but it's actually pretty good for what we got going on here. So as I implied earlier, this is very unique. And for anybody who's owned a couple of handheld emulators or even a plug and play emulator, like the ones that use the HDMI, we've done a few reviews on the channel of those, they normally stick away from first party games, especially games like Mario and things like that. But there is a no fear thing because I don't think they can be tracked down. It's always been puzzling that the cheapest quality devices are typically the ones that have the best games as far as the best first party games. And they often say plagiarity is the best compliment, but when it comes to devices like this, that's not always the case because you start to lose quality after a while. Fortunately, in this device here, we didn't lose really any build quality. It is a really well-built device. Buttons feel really good. Everything feels like it's holding together. Hell, the back feels better than the Mio Mini. I mean, it's got a lot going for it. It feels, you know, more sturdy on there. And I'm not normally a fan of using ROMs that aren't games I already own. That said, in this instance, there's kind of a moral gray area because none of these games are available to buy either new and a lot of them not even used anymore. So I'm trying to forget that I didn't create the library on this and I'm really trying to enjoy the emulator, and I really am enjoying the emulator. They take some true attention to detail to create a device that can't be modified by the consumer, and yet the games operate really well, and the system works pretty smoothly. I'm not saying there's not some issues with this device. What I am surprised by, however, is a device such as this that you don't feel like you need to modify for the most part, just to get it to work properly. Now you're not gonna get all the bangers on here and that's okay. You don't need to have all of them on a device like this. This is really for those quick sessions, whether you're waiting to pick up kids or waiting for your parents to pick you up or sitting in the drive through line and you just wanna jump in and play a quick game. Now that doesn't say that this isn't without issues. And the first big issue for me and we will talk about this a little bit more in depth later, is there's no save states on this device. So that really kind of puts a hampering on a lot of the gameplay types of games that I would want to play. Now, one thing I alluded to when I was pulling the stuff out of the box was that there's this cool little cable we're going to come back to. Two hours later. All right, so I did not realize it, but the battery on this had actually died, which is fine because I wanted to show off this last part that came with this, which is this cable right here. This actually has an AV cable. So I was able to pull out my AV adapter and we're going to hook this up through HDMI. And we're going to use this cable. We're going to hope that this works here. This would be a pretty big value in a device like this if it has AV out. That's something the Mio Mini doesn't even have. Let's see if we get some uh, AV action. Okay, so one thing that kind of sucks is you lose the picture on the screen, but it seems to work just fine as far as everything else goes. I do have a straight 16 inch monitor I'm using right now, so you don't get a ton of letterboxing, which is pretty sweet. This device is so much cooler now that we know that that works. And like I said, this is something that we can do on here that we can't do on something like the Mio Mini. The Mio Mini does not offer video out, but you do have an AV out option. Granted, it is an AV cable, and you do have to hook it up that way. And I didn't charge the battery very long, as you can see. It's dying pretty quickly right now. Just something to keep in mind when you're playing with this. So what do you think? Do you think it's worth the value? Are you gonna be at a shopping cart and need to spend a little bit of extra money to save some money on shipping and be like, I saw Selfish's video there on Retrospect and I know I wanna get that device just because it seems like there's something good there for it. Or is this just too much? When you compare it to another device that costs the same, such as this Game Boy replica right here, you get a lot more bang for your buck. Now this also does have an AV out, don't get me wrong. It does the same AV out thing that this other one does. But here you get a really poor, not an English game selection. Also, your button quality is absolutely terrible. Buttons are hard to push in. And then once you do get them in, they're spongy. We've all seen these before. They do sell them at five below, just to give you an idea of the quality of this bad boy. Where this here is a really good clone of a clone of a really good device. And from what I can tell in the few minutes that I've played with this is they did a really good build job here. <laughs> now that could go away over time and we will find out. I will probably do another video here in the future where I tear it apart. But anyways, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share this video with your friends because sharing helps grow the channel. And I'm more of a grower than a shower. I can use all the help that I can get. Anyways, I'm out. Since you made it this far, why don't you do yourself a favor and watch one of these other videos. But before you do that, hit the subscribe button right here in the middle. And that way you'll have the ability to be notified anytime I upload a future video. And then go figure out one of these, either the last video I did or one of these other videos that randomly pops up on here. Anyways, that's all I got. I'm out.